Hello! Welcome to another episode of Wild Living with Sunny Savage. I'm in Topanga Canyon, California, and it's fall time, and it's time to get a little bit nutty. Juglands Californica, Southern California Black Walnut. This tree is found in Southern California, and it is a beautiful tall tree with feathery leaves and alternate branching. I would encourage folks to plant one of these for future generations. They take some time to mature, but have an absolutely delicious, strongly flavored wild nut. In addition, they also have beautiful hardwood that can be used in fine furniture making, etc., etc. The husks surrounding the nut and shell are a powerful brown dye. So I would really encourage you to wear a pair of hefty duty gloves and clothes that you don't mind getting stained. So I've got my black walnuts home and I found an old screen that I've laid them out on to dry. I could have used some newspapers or something else just as long as they're getting some nice airflow and they're drying out we don't want any of the green husk left or if it is there you risk staining your fingers and I wait until they really dry crisp out and then I rub them between my hands and you get a nice clean nut once I have my nut I'm not going to be able to just use a regular nutcracker okay this is one tough nut to crack so if you're up for the challenge you can use a rock or a hammer. I've even heard of people driving over them with their cars. I've invested in a nice nut cracker, which I put under here. I always put a towel over so they don't fly away. And then I crack it and use a nut pick to scoop out the meat. Joining us today is Chris Watts, and he is a raw and living foods chef. So Chris, could you tell us what raw and living foods are? Absolutely. Raw and living foods are alive. Mm. They have not been heated, so all their nutrients are completely intact. Mm -hmm. um, everybody knows the word enzyme nowadays. Enzymes are what is present in the food that helps if it's a nut or seed, the enzymes are what unlocks the potential for it to sprout. Mm -hmm. Any other food, enzymes help break down that food. Mm -hmm. So what we've done is not heated it. You know, eight, 118 is about the temperature the enzymes are killed or destroyed. Mm -hmm. So we have them raw, they're completely intact. Um, if you remember from chemistry class, what did we do? We got out the Bunsen burner and we actually changed the chemical constituents uh, the molecular structure. So we've left it all completely intact mm -hmm. in raw living foods. All right, so what have you got for us today? All right, what we're gonna do is some living tacos. Uh, we're gonna use your black wild walnuts yeah. uh -huh. combined with these organic farmer's market walnuts to make taco meat, mm -hmm. <laughs> basically. What I've done with these walnuts today is I've soaked them for anywhere from three to five hours. These have been soaking for about three hours. What that does is, first of all, it softens them up a little bit. Also, um, any nut or seed you buy that has brown skin has a chemical coating on it. And what that is, is it's called an enzyme inhibitor. And mm -hmm. basically, it's God's way of protecting the seed or nut from sprouting in not perfect conditions. So basically, what we did was soak them and that kind of rinses that away. In nature, um, we would always want them to wait till it, you know, a good rain or snow melt or something like that to get everything sprouted. That way the conditions are perfect for that plant to grow. So we got rid of that chemical coating, the enzyme inhibitors. Alright, so what we have here is about two and a half to three cups of organic walnuts and I've soaked them and then strained them. I'm just going to dump these in the processor here. There those are. These are the wild black walnuts. Put those in as well. Okay. Let's see. So first thing I'm gonna do is put about, there's a half teaspoon, let's go with one teaspoon, or uh, one tablespoon, sorry, of whole cumin seeds. So there those are. And let's go with a half teaspoon of coriander powder. I can get that out there. About a quarter teaspoon of black pepper. I'm going to go a quarter teaspoon at a time with the salt. 
So there's just a little bit. I'm gonna keep it right there and then I'll taste it when we get done blending that and we'll see how it tastes. Let's go with a half teaspoon of the chili powder. Maybe a little bit. Let's try a quarter teaspoon to start with and we'll see how that goes. So there are our ingredients. I'm going to go a little bit smaller on that. Right about there. So that's kind of the consistency of ground beef there. Mmm, it smells good. <laughs> Alright, let's give that a taste and see how it turned out. Perfect. Pour it all into this bowl. Here's about a cup and a half of diced red and green peppers. I'm going to just add those to the bowl. And then I'm going to add, this is about a cup and a half of onion, but I'm only going to do about half of this. We'll use the rest of it for our salsa that we're going to make in just a minute. So just about like that. The first thing we're going to notice is the color. That's absolutely beautiful. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to mix this all together. Well, we're ready to assemble our wild California black walnut tacos. How are we going to put it together, Chris? Okay, well, first of all, we have two shell options, okay? The first one is red cabbage leaves, which make a beautiful and nutritious shell. And the second one is collard greens, which also make a beautiful, nutritious shell. I'm going to go with a red cabbage leaf on this one. So the first thing is to spoon some of our taco meat into the shell. Put a couple spoonfuls in there. Yeah. Like that. And some guacamole. My favorite. Yummy! <laughs> and all of the freshies, all of the fresh ingredients came from the Santa Monica Farmer's Market this morning. Some of our freshly made salsa. Heirloom tomatoes, all organic. And if you guys haven't tried heirloom tomatoes, you have to because they're the best. Okay. And we have some garnish here. The first garnish is shredded red cabbage, which what I did was I shredded it, squeezed a little bit of lime into it, a little bit of salt, and then massaged it with my hands. And what that does, it kind of breaks it down a little bit, softens it up. So this is our first garnish. Let's put that on the side there. And then we have the fresh cut corn kernels. Mm. And there is our raw Taco. So this looks wonderful. You've got yours on one of the collard greens, collard and I've green. got mine in the uh, cabbage boat, <laughs> <laughs> cabbage taco shell. And um, yeah, cheers. Let's we'll dig in. Yeah. Do you want to find out more about eating raw and living foods? Go to Chris's website, www.chrisjwatts.com. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah. Here we go. Oh. Mmm. So crispy and crunchy and mm -hmm. vital. What do you think? Why do you think so many people are being turned on to raw foods? I think a lot of people are starting to enjoy raw foods and really feeling good, and then spreading the word, telling their friends. Mm -hmm. um, it's spreading like wildfire at this point. It really is. So that makes me happy. Mm -hmm. yeah. So. You offer a few videos on your website as well, don't you? I have two videos on my website right mm -hmm. now. So we're trying to turn Chris into a new video blogger uh -huh. <laughs> for the raw food community. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you, Chris. This is wonderful. Thank you very much for having me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> See you next time. <laughs>